and stay out. And I don't want to ever see you around here again. But, Mr. Trucker... And that goes for your father, too. You Crabwell Corners people stay in Crabwell Corners, if you can stand it. <laughs> and get this hound out of here, too. Out! Out! Why don't you give him a transfusion, Tad? Come on, Speedy. Do you want me to leave you here in Hooterville? He may be lazy, but he's not dumb. <laughs> None of them crap well corners kids has respect for their adults. Morning, Sam. Of all that doggone no good ornery... Did my sewing machine come back? I should have thrown that Tad Winslow out of here before he came in. What'd you do? Of all the sneaky, low-down, underhanded... What'd you do? Old man Winslow, he ain't man enough to come over here by himself, so he sends his kid over and that stupid dog... What'd he do? Well, I'll tell you what he do, uh, did. He had the nerve to come in here in broad daylight with a smile on his face. That's when I should have known he was up to no good, when he smiled. Because he never smiles unless he's up to no good. I don't like that kid, and I don't like his dad, and I don't like the town he lives in. Did my sewing machine come back? Hey, ain't you interested in what he did? What'd he do? All the low-down, backstabbing... Sam, either tell me what he did or give me my sewing machine. Oh, well, your sewing machine's out in the back room, and this is what he did. It's a summons. Crabwell Corners versus Town of Hooterville. Yeah, Crabwell Corners is suing us for our Spanish-American war cannon. How come they gave you the summons? You ain't authorized to versus Crabwell Corners. Well, who else would they give it to? I'm the highest ranking official in Hooterville. The Justice of the Peace. You can't get much higher in Hooterville. <laughs> That'll be ten cents, Joe. I thought we settled who owned the cannon years ago. We did, but they've been trying to unsettle it. They couldn't get it legal, so they're going to take it to court. Well, they haven't got a leg to stand on. That cannon was captured fair and square by a company of Hooterville volunteers charging up San Juan Hill. Well, I think it's a good idea, then, to go to court and settle it once and for all. Well, you're darn right it is. Justice ain't blind. Right makes right. Possession is nine points in the law. There ain't a court in the land that would think twice about giving the nod to Crabwell Corners over us. Where do we have to appear? Crabwell Corners Municipal Court. <laughs> He sure did a good job of overhauling this machine. It's just like new. Mom, that'll never be a new machine. That can't do half the things the new models can do. Mom, when are you going to make me a new dress for school? I just made you one. Well, that was for Bobby Joe. Well, you'll get to wear it soon enough. Mom, just once can I be the first one to wear a dress? You were the first one to wear your Sunday dress. Yeah, but weekdays, I'm just a hand-me-down. <laughs> Next time I get born into a family, I'm going to be born first. Well, honey, I was planning on making you one. Boy, that's beautiful. Wait till the kids in school see me in it. Well, I'm afraid they never will. That's for Billy Joe's party dress. Party? Mm-hmm. Henry Brewster's taking her to the pioneer dance. Henry Brewster? Yuck. <laughs> Why does she go out with him? Maybe she likes him. Hello. Oh, Billy Joe, I got the material for your party dress. How do you like it? It's horrible. <laughs> Boy, wait till the kids in school see me in that. Look, this is the most expensive material that Sam has in his store. It's horrible. I agree. Mom, do you think there's enough there to make me a coat? Not so fast. Now, what's wrong with this? It's horrible. And Henry Brewster's horrible. In fact, the whole world is horrible. Guess who had a fight with you-know-who? Stay out of this hand-me-down. Is this one of those never-call-me-again-in-your-whole-life fights, or is it serious? It's serious. I never want to see him again. We're through. You wouldn't believe what he said to me. Oh, yes, we would. Sure. Now, wait a minute. No fighting between the two of you about the fight that Willie Joe had with Henry. Just tell me one thing. Are you going to the dance with him? Absolutely not. We are through, finished, washed up. I gave him back his fraternity pin, his signet ring, and that locket he gave me for my birthday. He'll be back. And what makes you so sure? You've still got his record player. <laughs> All breeds obedient. 
Prize Trials, sponsored by County Kennel Club. Prizes, trophies, entrance fee, one dollar. Would you like to enter the contest? You got a dollar? If he had a dollar, he'd be worth a dollar and a quarter altogether. <laughs> if you ignore it, it'll go away. What couldn't even get in the contest? Why not? It says all breeds, and he's certainly all breeds. <laughs> That means pure breeds. All of his breeds are pure. <laughs> Just be thankful he can't compete, because my dog is going to run away with all the prizes. Oh, run away? He can't even stand up. <laughs> my dog? Didn't Mr. Drucker tell you to stay out of Hooterville? I'm waiting for the train. Well, then why don't you go stand on the track so you don't miss it? <laughs> is your sister home? Which sister? The beautiful one. You'll have to be more specific than that. Billy Joe. I hear she had a fight with Horrible Henry and she hasn't got a date for the Pioneer Dance. So I thought I'd give her a break and ask her. Why don't you give everybody a break and stand on the tracks? <laughs> Come on. Let's go to the other end of the platform where the air is better. <laughs> that's going to win the obedience contest. Have you ever seen anything so ridiculous? Look, that dog... is about the least likely to win a contest I've ever seen. Show him how you obey. Sit up. Down. Did you teach him that, or is he just naturally clumsy? At least he's alive. Maybe I could talk to the judges about letting your dog in the contest. Just for laughs. He'd have the last laugh when he walked off with the first prize. Are you serious? Get him in the contest and see. How about a private contest? Your dog against mine. Anytime. How about Saturday morning? Won't you be too busy scurrying around trying to find somebody to go to the dance with you? That's all settled. I'm going to take your sister. You haven't even asked her. Not that it would do you any good. I thought a date with her would make a dandy prize. Prize? <laughs> There's no sense in having our dogs compete unless there's something at stake. Now, wait a second. I knew you'd chicken out. I'm not chickening out. See you Saturday. Come on, Speedy. <laughs> out. Out. See you Saturday. <laughs> Do you think it'll be done in time for the dance Saturday night? Not if I hadn't started sewing the minute you said you never wanted to see Henry again as long as you live. Well, I didn't at the time. But then I changed my mind. You always do. Well, I got to thinking about what Henry said to me, and it wasn't so bad. He said worse things to me. Oh, hold still. Mom, don't you think it's a little high? Well, you don't want a dragon on the ground. Well, I'm talking about this end. <laughs> well, I could lower it a little. Thanks. Jacket will cover it. What jacket? <laughs> this one. I'm sewing you into it before you leave. Oh, Mom, do you want to... I certainly do. When you were my age, didn't your mother let you wear low-cut dresses? My mother did, but my husband wouldn't. Billy <laughs> Joe? I'm in Mom's room. Billy Joe, I've got something funny to tell you. I was waiting for the train in Hooterville and... What's that? My dress that I'm going to wear to the dance Saturday night. Henry and I made up. Well, you can't do that. She always does. Oh, but what's the matter with you? Oh, well, I... You see, I... Oh, well, you'll probably have another fight with him before the dance, won't you? No. You should. Because there are a lot of nice fellows who'd be glad to take you. Oh, like who? Dad Winslow. Who? <laughs> Tad Winslow. Mom, you better take her temperature. I think she's got a fever. <laughs> Far it does feel hot. Good. Maybe I'll get sick. In fact, well, I am sick. Lady Joe, are you trying to tell us something? Kind of. What happened in Hooterville? Well, what happened? Oh, well, there's nothing to worry about. His dog doesn't stand a chance of winning. Maybe I've... 
got a fever because I keep hearing a voice, but I don't understand what it's saying. What it's saying is this. Tad Winslow insulted your dog. My dog? Our dog. The family dog. This poor little animal that's all breeds, but none that the county kennel club will recognize. Betty Jo, forget about the poor dog and tell us what you're trying not to tell us, huh? Well, I'd better hold this. <laughs> you see, I didn't know you'd made up with Henry, so when Tad Winslow challenged our dog to an obedience contest with a date with you as first prize, I accepted. You what? Well, I didn't think you'd mind, and I knew you wouldn't want Tad Winslow to think his old bloodhound could beat your dog. I don't care what Tad Winslow thinks, and that's not my dog. <laughs> Well, if that's the way you feel, you can just tell Tad Winslow yourself that the whole thing's off. Uh, just a minute, Betty Jo. Let me get this thing straight. You made a bet with Tad Winslow, his bloodhound against him. Right. And if his bloodhound wins, Billy Joe's supposed to go to the dance with Tad? Right. Not that it matters, but what happens if he wins? Then you don't have to go to the dance with him. <laughs> Mom, would you tell your daughter that no matter what she bet with Tad Winslow, there is no bet? That's right. Dishonor the name of Bradley. <laughs> well, you had no right to bet me. Why didn't you bet yourself? Oh, I wouldn't go out with Tad Winslow. <laughs> Mom! Tad tricking this poor innocent girl. Betty Jo, tell you what to do. You go over to Crabwell Corners and you tell Tad that the bet is off. Me? But I'm just a poor innocent girl. Well, I'm not. I mean, I'm not a girl. I mean, I'm... I'll do it. <laughs> Is there anybody can give me a ride over to Crabwell Corners? I'm afraid not. Well, I gotta get over there right away and settle something with Tad Winslow. Well, I'll be glad to lend you that old bicycle I got out back. Is Tad home? Something wrong? Nothing I can't straighten out. Well, he'll be home later. Why don't you come in and wait for him? Well, I... Oh, come on. Well, Martha, if you're not busy. Oh, no, I was just doing a little sewing. I've got the same model. How does yours work? Like a charm since I had it overhauled. Well, I wish I could afford to have something done to this. Well, sit down. Martha, I really oh, don't... Oh, sit down. Oh, Martha. <laughs> you know, I haven't seen you for months. How's everything at the hotel? Not too bad. And how are the girls? Well, they're fine, except Betty Jo. Something wrong with her? Mm, there won't be after I talk to Tad. You didn't come over here to talk to him about that bet, did you? I certainly did. Forget it. But I can't forget it, Martha. Tad's always teasing. He's forgotten about it already. He has? Sure. You know how those kids are always up to something. <laughs> Oh, they sure are. Although, I wish they'd had the contest. Because I'd like Tad to go out with a pretty girl like Billy Joe. Well, even if they'd had the contest, Tad wouldn't have been taking Billy Joe to the dance. Oh, yes, he would. <laughs> he didn't understand. If Tad's dog had beat your little dog, then he would have had the date. <laughs> if he beat our dog. You don't think he could? I certainly don't. Well, I'm afraid I can't agree with you. Oh, you can't. No, I can't. Hi, Kate. You talk with Tad? No, I talk with Martha. What about the bet? Well, I settled it with Martha. It's all off. Good for you, Kate. You imagine the nerve of that Tad Winslow trying to weasel a date out of one of our girls? Even though that bloodless bloodhound of his doesn't stand a chance. That's exactly what I said to Martha. <laughs> What'd she say? She didn't agree. You mean she thought Tad's dog could beat yours? She certainly did. Too bad she didn't want to bet. She certainly did. She did? My brand new fixed up old sewing machine against her old broken down sewing machine. Kate, isn't it bad enough having one Winslow trap Betty Joe into a bet without letting Martha do the same to you? Well, she just got me good and mad. Well, the Winslows have a talent for making people mad. Do you know how much the lawyer in on this cannon suit is going to cost us? Sixty-five dollars. Kate, I ain't going to let you go through with this bet. Uncle Joe, our dog can't lose. That's not the point. 
Martha Winslow trapped you into betting practically a brand new sewing machine against a hunk of junk. If they want to bet, let them make the odds even. But Uncle Joe, well, Joe's right. You darn tootin' I am. I'll take care of this. <laughs> Didn't take long. I had a little heart-to-heart -heart talk with old man Winslow. The sewing machine bets off. Good for you, Joe. Can you imagine him trying to tell me that their dog could beat ours? <laughs> well, I ain't one to hold a man's stupidity against him. I told him they could come over and look at the fire engine any time they want. No, oh, well, that's... Fire engine? <laughs> he was fool enough to bet the Crabwell Corners fire engine. What were you fool enough to bet? <laughs> or Spanish-American war cannon. <laughs> what? Mr. Carson. Glad I caught you. My father drew up this agreement for you to sign, just in case you decided to weasel out of the bet. I ain't weaseling. Give it to me. Uncle Joe, maybe you hey, better... someday this town will erect a statue to me for what I've done. <laughs> there. Thanks. Joe! Sam, our dog can beat theirs with his tail tied behind his back. <laughs> oh, Mr. Drucker, almost forgot. Eat some dog biscuits for my dog. <laughs> Who is that? My dog. Close the door. That ain't your dog. Your dog's a bloodhound. Who said so? You did. No, I didn't. You mean the bloodhound isn't yours? No, I was just mining in for Mrs. Barrett while she was away visiting her sister. Well, come on, open the door. <laughs> Joe, about that statue. We'd better have it made soon, because after the contest, nobody around here is going to remember what you look like. <laughs>
pretty good. Real good. Yeah, due to my dog training know-how. Crap, <laughs> well, Connor's dog. The score is uh, 96 points for the Hooterville dog. And uh, 98 and a half points for Crabwell Corners dog. Oh. Well, I'll tow the cannon back to Crabwell Corners with our fire engine. Wait a second. There's one more event. If we win that, we win the contest. You don't really expect your dog to jump that, do you? <laughs> Uncle Joe, no matter where you go, I want you to promise to keep in touch. Okay. Poor little dog. I wonder what he's thinking. Holy smoke. Are they kidding? Those uh, pure breeds are pretty high strung. Maybe I can make him nervous. You uh, planning on jumping that? Yeah, of course. They got a good vet over at Crabwell Corners. Are you trying to tell me something? Too bad about old Rex. Who is Rex? He used to be a great Dane before he tried jumping a barrier. What do you mean, used to be? I'd rather not say. Yeah. Nick Fish, stay in. Where's my dog? Here, champ. And now for the final event, in which each dog will jump the six foot barrier. Uh, get your dogs ready. Here, champ. Here, champ. Well, what's the matter? My dog's disappeared. It chickened out. According to county kennel club rules, if a dog fails to appear for an event, he's disqualified. I guess the Hooterville dog wins the contest by default. <laughs> Welcome home, Uncle Joe. Doggone it, Joe. We want ourselves a fire engine. It's all yours. Just be sure and keep up the monthly payments. Monthly <laughs> payments? Hey! Well, you almost won yourself a fire engine. We still got our cannon. We almost didn't. He never could have jumped that barrier. You little rat! You con me into losing! <laughs> Mom, did you see that? Well, yes, I did, but I don't believe it. dog isn't chasing him anymore. <laughs> This has been a Filmways presentation.